Hi guys, this is Mike. In this video, I'm going to talk about MoGraph Basics in Cinema 4D. So MoGraph is a very powerful and, and practically limitless uh, section within Cinema 4D that allows you to do mainly motion graphics, but also modeling. We can do a lot of different things within Cinema 4D using MoGraph. And I want to just go through some of the basics. So let's go up to the menu and just kind of like talk a little bit about the menu. Now we have the main generators here and you're probably going to be using the cloner the most because it's, it's the most uh, practical and most useful for what you want to do with motion graphics. But we have a bunch of different other objects here that we can go through in later videos, but I want to concentrate on the cloner and talk a little bit about effectors. Now, uh, as I said, the cloner is a generator. It's going to generate clones of objects, uh, of models that you may have. And then the effectors will affect how that is displayed within your viewport and your animation. So we're going to go to a cloner and we're just going to choose this generator. And then we're going to choose an object. And just for this basic uh, video, I just want to talk a little bit um, so we'll just go through a very basic object. So we'll just hold down shift and click on the cube. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to put the cube underneath the cloner so it can be used as a generator. So let's talk a little bit about the hierarchy of this MoGraph cloner. So in order to have a clones for the MoGraph, you're going to have to have the cube underneath or as a child of the cloner. So in order to do that, you just click and drag and you can see this little arrow and square. And then when you get to over the cloner object, you can see the arrow turns to a down arrow. And that's how you know that this will be a child of this object. So I released the mouse or stylus and you can see how that cube uh, drops in and you can see how your viewport changes. Now, one thing I want to show you as I pull this back, you can see how the color changes as well. We have a we have our normal gray that our default gray that we use for uh, for our cubes, for our objects. But when we drag it underneath, it then turns to a new color, it turns to white. So I can show you how that is also changed as well. So we'll go through the object tab and we'll, I'll explain this a little bit further detail. Now you can see that it kind of looks like it turned into a big, um, big cube, but it turns into more of a rectangle. So if you go to your cloner or excuse me, you go to your cube and we're going to go to T on our keyboard to transform and we're going to scale down our cube to the point where we can then see the individual cubes. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And what we have here is now, if we go to our cloner, you can see that if you come right down here to count, you can see that we have three and we can adjust that or reduce that as well. So if I pull out just a little bit, you can see that we can then adjust how many uh, count of our clones that we have. Now we have a few different options with our mode. Right now we have it linear. We have it set to linear and that how it clones in what direction, this will be the X, Y, and Z. This will give you these parameters to decide of how and in what direction these clones will clone. So if I go to zero in our Y, and then I go to zero, uh, excuse me, 50 and our X, you can see now that we now clone to the X and same thing with our Z. Okay, great. So what we can then do is we can talk a little bit about the mode. So if I go to mode, we can then go to, um, right now we have an object so if, if we go to, if at default we have it at linear, but if we go to object at this point, we could then put a, whoops, let me select that again. If we go to another object, say a sphere, 
and then we hide our sphere and we can put our select our cloner and we go to our sphere drag this into the object field now what we can then do oh i'm sorry uh not hide um the that this disables it i'm sorry about that if you go to your stoplight and turn that to red it'll hide the uh the sphere from the viewport and just to reiterate you want to make sure if you're going to render this that this is also at red as well so what you can see here is this cloner then clones around your object so as you create as you resize your your sphere your clones will then will then stretch out so this is a nice little way if and i know this is not very um clear in terms of uh something easily recognizable but you can see as you start developing a little bit more you can have more interesting objects say if you wanted to put trees around a say a globe if you wanted to make some kind of stylized globe you can uh, put these trees if these cubes were trees you could have that around say a very small earth like a mini earth so let's delete this our sphere and let's go back to our cloner and let's go back to uh well let me just kind of show you a few of these you have radial oops you also have grid array and you can see that we have our count at three three and three when we're in grid array and we can adjust that uh, depending on you know uh, which x y and z so this is x y and z uh, we also have um, we also have honeycomb, which is new for uh, our um, I believe it is R18 that that has come out. So this allows us to make a honeycomb, and I don't have the the best object for this. Um, probably something uh, a little bit more like a uh, an octa or excuse me a polygon that would work a little bit better. Um, but let me go back to our linear and I want to show you how the effector affects our cloners. So one that you will probably use a lot is the random effector. So if I go to my uh, MoGraph and I go to effector, I can come down here in the middle where it says random. And that's going to add in uh, this into our layer list. And what we can then do, or excuse me, our object manager. And then what we can then do is go to our attributes. And you can see that now we have a uh, new for R20, we have a new fall off system called fields. And this will allow me to add in a different type of field for our, our, our effectors. And I'll go into this a little bit uh, greater detail, but just want to give you a, a basic overview. If we choose, say, um, Well, we could just choose like a, a spherical is fine for now. And what we can then do is you can see how this sphere will influence the object depending, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, affect the clones as I move this object around, or move this spherical field around, I should say. And then of course you can also animate this in our timeline and have an animation. So, um, so if I go to say, and so this affects our random. So if I go to back to my random effector, and then I go to my effector tab and our parameters, we can choose which uh, direction we want to affect. So we can take this all the way to zero if we don't want to affect the X direction, and then we can adjust this even more depending on you know what we're trying to accomplish so we have multiple ways of affecting a, a randomly our clones but not only position but we can affect the scale we can affect the rotation as well if we want to adjust you know some of these these areas here 
And then what we can then do is go to our cloner and then we can choose something like, um, well, we could go to maybe grid array and oops, excuse me. I grabbed this one point. So what I can then do and let me go back to my spherical. Sorry about that. And so as you pull this spherical field, you can see how this affects your cloners. So this is a very powerful system that we have here. And I know I'm going over some of the very basics, but in uh, subsequent videos, what I'll be able to, be, to show you is a little bit more um, how, how we can use this in a little bit more practical sense. This kind of gives you a, a little bit of an overview. So if this is helpful, uh, let me know in the comment section. Let me know if you uh, want to learn something else, even if it's not even uh, MoGraph, if you wanna, uh, want me to talk, uh, go over something, uh, something that you want to learn, uh, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to get to each and every one um, and do a, a tutorial on each of those. Uh, so I'm going to go over a little bit more about effectors. I'm going to go over each of the individual parts of MoGraph in the next videos.